Hi, my name is Rasmus and I'm making a 3D top-down action adventure game. Welcome and thanks for joining in on this first devlog episode. I'm making an action adventure game where you play as a robot protagonist on the future planet Earth. These devlog videos will show how development of the game is progressing and will hopefully help to keep me motivated throughout the development process as well. I've been making games for a few years now, mainly through participating in game jams. With a small group of friends, I've created games such as Space Dizzy, a 2D platformer that tilts every 10 seconds, like Sunday Traffic, where you need to manage a global traffic jam through a clever combination of traffic lights and nukes, or The Frozen Deep, a 3D platformer where you rotate the world in order to navigate a labyrinth of glacier tunnels. But I feel like I'm ready to start a more serious project. So, I've had the story idea ready for a while, and the plan is to make a classic action-adventure game inspired by titles like The Legend of Zelda and Tunic, while adding a few Metroidvania-like features you might know from Hollow Knight or Dark Souls. So, let's uh, jump into Unity and get to work. Before going too much into the story, I wanted to make a kind of combat arena to work on the player character and get combat feeling really good. For now, I don't really need much for the actual arena, so I just made a ground object with some trees on it just to have some terrain to navigate. To make all of it work, I put in a box to act as a character and attached a very simple movement script to it. Now, since precise movement is going to be an important feature of the game, I went with a character controller over physics-based movement. This gives me a lot more control over what happens in the game. Finally, I set up a Cinemachine camera to follow the box around, and it's done. I've been using Midjourney for a while for a lot of different purposes, but especially for brainstorming. So I used it here to come up with some ideas for a character. Now, I'm going for a rather low poly, flat shaded look, and it came up with a bunch of concepts that I really liked. So after finding a particular model for my player, I loaded up Blender, and that's when I remembered that I suck at character modeling. So I rewatched a bunch of my favorite Infensia videos to brush up on my skills. Now, if you don't know Infensia, I highly recommend a visit to his channel if you are in any way into low poly modeling. I dropped the link for you in the description. Anyway, after spending way too much time in Blender, I ended up with this guy. I threw in a few materials and added him to the game. Now, although the T-pose here looks great, he does need some animations to feel good to play. So after adding an armature to the model in Blender, I went over to Mixamo for some animations. I grabbed a good looking idle and running animation and added them to my character in Blender. I often find that the Mixamo animations feel a bit too detailed for more low poly looks, so I simplified them a bit before loading them into the game. Next, I started to work on melee combat. After grabbing a punching animation that I liked, I started to work on the combat animation system. I decided to write my own animation state machine, which allows me to control all animations from code. Now, this is a trick I learned from TarotDev. He has a video called Animate Like a Programmer that I linked in the description. Be sure to check it out if, like me, you have wasted hours and hours with inexplicably delayed transitions and unreadable animation spider webs. After a lot of experimentation, I went for a three punch combo approach, where the player can chain up up to three rapid attacks before needing a brief downtime. I added a small forward push to the player when initiating an attack and modified the animation so that the model takes a step forward with every punch. Now I just needed to mirror the punching animation and set it up so that a right arm punch is always followed by a left arm punch and vice versa. 
finally, in addition to the punching animations, I added a roll move that will allow the player to dodge an attack or quickly close the distance to an enemy. After adding a take hit function with a dedicated hit animation, I was ready to start working on the enemy. I grabbed another of the mid journey concepts that I liked and repeated the blender mixamo process from the player character. This particular enemy will be the most basic enemy you can imagine. It will basically walk around between a number of predefined points in the world using Unity's built in nav mesh component. If the player gets within a certain acro range, it will walk towards the player, and if the player gets within the melee range, the enemy will initiate combat. The combat cycle is equally simple. It will stand in an initiate stance for a short period of time before pushing forward with a swipe attack. This will allow the player to either dodge or interrupt the attack. After tweaking everything so combat felt fast and fluent, I went back to add some effects. I added a slash for the player attack as well as a screen shake whenever the player attacks or takes damage. Finally, I added a classic hit flash effect by substituting materials for a white unlit material for a short duration after taking damage. Now, there's still a lot of work to be done to fine tune everything, but I feel like it's going in the right direction. Next, I plan to add a few more enemy types and probably more effects to the whole thing, including sound effects. If you would like to see where the game is going from here, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to drop a like for the video as well. I'll see you next time.